Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The Merseyside derby took centre stage as Everton hosted Liverpool in the Premier League. In a tactical chess match, both Ancelotti and Klopp used interesting tactics to punch and counter-punch. And the match ended nil all, with the XG confirming how evenly the chances were distributed. But what tactics did both managers use? Well, let's take a look. A quick reminder of the formations. Everton lined up in Ancelotti's so far favoured 4-4-2. In return, Klopp stuck to his favoured 4-3-3. As Liverpool dominated the ball, let's assess how they attacked first. Liverpool almost always went short from the goal kick, with Alisson attempting just five long balls. Liverpool could build up with just two centre-backs, whilst the full-backs pushed right up the pitch. This is because Everton didn't really look to press high. Despite using two forwards, who could potentially press the two centre-backs, instead, Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison aimed to cut off the passes into midfield, which they did well by staying compact centrally and usually ensuring there was a man on Fabinho. This is because using the 4-4-2 against the 4-3-3, if they pushed high, Everton would easily be overrun in the midfield, so by staying deep, they made things closer. So often, the Liverpool midfielder would have to drop deep to try and pick up the ball and they were less dangerous when they were this far away from the goal. Liverpool adapted to this in a few different ways. The fullbacks pushed right up and Everton's wingers were disciplined and followed deep. And Liverpool tended to tuck in their wingers as inside forwards, which would drag the fullbacks central. Liverpool would then split their wide midfielders. If Everton's winger tucked in on the wide midfielder, the direct switch would be on to the opposing fullback, who could then attempt the cross. But if they tracked their man, a quick switch through the defence would find the wide midfielder in renewed space. Generally, Liverpool tried to create numerical advantages in different areas around the pitch when higher up. They realised they had a natural numerical advantage in the central midfield, so the wide midfielder could shift wide to join the fullback and inside forward to create a 3 versus 2 out wide. At the same time, when needed, the false 9 could then shift into the midfield to again create the 3 versus 2 in the central area, and these overloads in multiple regions may help explain why Liverpool dominated the ball. The average positioning shows this, with 3 clusters of 3 on either side. The front three were very interchangeable in these situations, but the general pattern was one in the half space and two in the wider region staggered vertically, and this meant that Liverpool generally attacked with the front five. If the fullback was wide, they would feed their runner in the inside channel. But more consistently, the fullback tucked in whilst the winger would be attracted to the man with the ball. And if the ball subsequently went wide, usually to Trent, he would have the space to cross and he attempted 12 crosses and completed 3, which was a game high. And Henderson completed the second most as they could switch roles. It should be noted that Joe Gomez when he came on got into good positions high up on the left. However, unlike Robertson, he's not a great crosser with his left foot, which affected the dynamics and as a result, he only attempted one cross. Now what tactics did Everton use when they were attacking? Everton knew they could not always go long from the goal kick, as the Liverpool centre-backs are great aerially, and Everton were also mismatched in the midfield. This meant they had to be brave and take chances when building out from the goal kick. Often, this meant a centre-back assisting Pickford whilst the other stayed higher up on the edge of the box, and the full-back split wide. As soon as Pickford passed the centre-back, the higher centre-back would move to either side, opening room for the pivot to drop deep into. Firmino would then press the deeper centre-back, at which point either the pivot or the centre-back would be free and try to play it into the full-back. When the ball was with Everton, the 4-4-2 had to shift to even up numbers in the midfield. Gordon would often tuck right in, whilst Dinier moved high on the left. This meant that when Liverpool pressed with the front three, Dinier was an easy outlet, as Minamino was marking the centre-back rather than Dinier. 
But later in the match, the accuracy of the Everton passes reduced and Everton went long more often. This was successful as Liverpool had high fullbacks, so this meant there was almost a 2 vs 2 in this region and both Richarlison and Calvert Lewin won a couple of crucial headers which subsequently led to chances. However, good last minute blocks denied them. Overall, it was a tight encounter, contested by two tactical managers. But what did you make of each team's performance? Drop it down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the videos linked at the end of this one. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.